This meeting is called to order. Good evening and welcome to the October 24, 2019 meeting of the Southeast Delco Board of School Directors. Would everyone please stand and have a salute to the flag and a moment of silence. Mr. Butler, may I have a roll call, please? Ms. Abney? Ms. Forbes? Present. Ms. Gallagher? Present. Mr. Big Bride? Excuse? Ms. Monroe? Present. Ms. Peter Boyd? Present. Uh, Ms. War Woodfolk? Present. Uh, Ms. Irons? Present. Ms. Harris Johnson? Present. Dr. Butts? Present. Mr. DiOrio? Present. Mr. Butler? Present. Ms. Locke? Present. And Ms. Phillips? Present. Thank you, Mr. Butler. I have no comments at this moment. Please note that persons wishing to address the board must be a resident or an employee of the, of the district, provide their name and address, and complete the yellow card, which is in the back of the room. Students, are you ready to give your report now? Good evening, members of the school board of directors, administrators, teachers, students, and community members. Here are your Academy Park High School announcements. Eligible high school students have been getting geared up to perform their civic duty as United States citizens. On September 30th, the League of Women Voters were at Academy Park to register students who are eligible to vote. Homecoming week was great. School Spirit Week themes, the Powder Puff Game, alumni participation, the Homecoming Parade, and the Homecoming Court all made for an exciting week, topped off by defeating arch rival Inner Borough at the Homecoming Game. Two more college ses information sessions were facilitated at the end of September. An information session took place with Wilkes University and University of Maine. The Rising Scholars Program sessions for this school year began on Saturday, September 27th. Bi-weekly sessions and additional meetings will be in place throughout the school year. A dual enrollment information se session for attending DCC was fa facilitated on Friday, October 18th. Students took advantage of this opportunity to learn more about the dual enrollment program. On September 24th, the girls' tennis team made their mark at the DelVal Singles Tournament. Akima Roger won her first round match, but dropped a close 6-1, 7-6 semifinal decision to the eventual winner from Penwood. Brea Jackson defeated her Penwood opponent in a marathon three-hour match before losing to Chichester in the semifinals. Roger then captured third place by defeating teammate Jackson in the consolation match. On October 14th, the girls' tennis team closed their 2019 season with a win against visiting Pottstown 3-2. With the match knotted at 2-2, the doubles teams of Victoria Scott and Gwyneth Bevan sealed the victory with a strong finish to an exciting three-set match, shutting out their opponents 6-0 in the third set. In this rebuilding year, the Lady Knights finished strong, winning the DelVal Team Championship for the seventh straight year with a 54-0 league record over that span and finishing third and fourth in singles and second and third in doubles in the Del Valley. League. The team's efforts also helped boost Coach Day's career tennis coaching record to 671 wins. Congratulations, girls. On September 26, the varsity Phil hockey team beat Interborough 2-1. Sanaya McLendon scored a goal and Amy Dow scored the winning goal in overtime. Hynifa Hill made seven saves. The entire team played extremely well, earning them a victory. Congratulations to the seniors and the entire varsity field hockey team with a 5-1 win over Interboro last on senior night. 
Tiani White scored twice and had one assist, and Sanaya McClendon, Amy Dow, and Zaria Kamen also scored. The team kept their composure and remained focused throughout the game and took advantage of their speed and defensive skills to earn another victory against Interboro. On October 14th, the field hockey team arrived to Norristown and came home with a 6-4 victory. Sanaya McClendon, Tiani White, and Amy Dow scored goals, and freshman Christina Ravello scored her first varsity goal. The Interact Club facilitated a blood drive on October 1st. 60 students donated blood to the American Red Cross. There were a total of 100 students working and giving blood at Becca's blood drive. Excellent work, AP. The Academy Park Rain Garden was awarded the Garden of Distinction in the 2019 PHS Gardening Contest. Out of over 400 entries, the Academy Park Rain Garden was selected as the Garden of Distinction. The Rain Garden team will be celebrated at PHS events. On October 8th, the National Honor Society program began its after-school tutoring sessions, which will take place on Tuesdays from 2.15 to 3.15 in room 220. Students can receive help from other students on anything such as homework, studying for a test, editing an essay, going over confusing concepts, etc. On October 7th, the boys' cross-country team won the Delval title by defeating Penwood at Rose Tree Park. The last time the cross-country won the league was 37 years ago in 1982. The girls' team had a great season, too, but despite not having enough girls, they weren't able to qualify for any league wins. Please congratulate the team members. On October 18, the boys' cross-country team ended their season by winning Delval League meet. The boys took first, second, and third in all their indiv individual races. Each month, the Rotary Club of Chester Pike honors students in the top 10% of the senior class with a fancy sit-down dinner and a $50 book stipend. <laughs> Last school year, Academy Park was the only school with 100% student staff participation. Because of our dedication, Rotary Club was able to offer two graduating seniors with a $1,000 book stipend. Cremo Mansley was our first recipient for the month of September. Please congratulate him. The recipient of the Rotary Club of Chester Pike Student of the Month for November will be Cheyenne Phillips. Congratulations to Cheyenne. <laughs> On October 9th, the Lady Knights volleyball team defeated Chichester games with Chichester three games to one to complete the Delval season undefeated. The Knights league record is 9-0, and this is their second championship in 33 years. The Knights were led by the hitting of seniors Carrie Ann, Catherine, Kyla, and Siani. The defensive play of Brenda Gordon was perfect. Gianna Seabury, Angel, Oak, Angel, and Shantae are honorable mentions. Their coach would like to thank all of the students who showed up on the volleyball senior night. On October 2nd, active shooter PD was facilitated at APHS. This concludes your Academy Park High School announcements. Thank you very much, ladies. And we're, I know that the board is very happy that so many uh, of our athletic teams have did so well since school started in, in awards and everything. So would you pass that on to them from us? Thank you. And ladies, if you would like to leave now, because we know you have a lot of homework and you just can't wait, home, can't wait to get home to do it. <laughs> So if you would like to leave now, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Butch, do you have a superintendent's report? Yes, just a couple of items. Want to remind the board members that on Wednesday of next week, October 30th, the community college has the annual appreciation dinner. Uh, the uh, dinner begins, the reception begins at 6 p.m. and then dinner is 6.30. Uh, everybody who indicated they were able to go, uh, the reservations were made. So uh, uh, please keep that on your calendar. Second item, I just want to to remind the board and community, we are beginning our audit process uh, with the state, uh, not the state, with the local auditors. Uh, sorry, Mr. Butler, I probably uh, made your heart uh, yeah, beat a little faster there. Uh, with the local audit uh, process, 
and that process will take place over the next month. A uh, report will uh, take place during the month of December or January. At the same time, we have to submit our annual financial report, uh, and that has to be submitted in the next month. So that goes hand in hand with the audit. Uh, so we will be submitting that to the state. As I've indicated, uh, our finances over the last couple of years has uh, been a major concern and we have to be aware of that as we start the budget process for next year. And the preliminary budget process is moved up slightly uh, this upcoming year due to the fact that the primary election takes place in April instead of May. So all the time frames are based off of the primary election date. And therefore, in December, we either have to approve a resolution or approve a preliminary budget. Uh, so that was highlighted in the board community update that went out earlier this week. So if you didn't get a chance to read it, uh, I sent an email to the board members early this week. It is also available on our website. At the bottom of our opening page on the website, our community board update is uh, posted there. Finally, the district is hosting a family math night on Tuesday, October 29th at Darby Township School. Monster Math 2019 is sponsored by Title I funds and will feature a variety of math related sessions such as Create Your Own Monster Face, Cookie Monster Math, and Spooky Scary Graphing. So um, everybody please plan to attend. Uh, attendees will be treated to a dinner at the start of the evening and the program begins at 5.30 and will end at around 7.30. So please uh, come out. If you have any questions, speak to Dr. Mozakowski, and uh, she has additional information. Also, our staff um, has been working very hard in organizing this, so I do want to acknowledge their effort in organizing this math night. Madam President, that's my report. Thank you, Dr. Butts. Motion to approve agenda. Motion. <coughs> she didn't say it yet. Oh, sorry. Jumped the gun, sorry. That's quite okay. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? Okay. Motion. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the September 26, 2019 regular board business meeting? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Aye. I would like to amend my motion. So the report that's listed on board docs will be modified right, so I'll, I'll be and the modified report looks <laughs> like this So I want to amend my motion. You probably don't have to. We're substituting the report that's on board docs for this report. So this okay. one is accurate, correct? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Again, do I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Are there any questions on the bills, Ms. Gallagher? Oh, Madam President, um, I have a, a few. On page 179, um, the 21st Century Cyber 
Um, actually, it's the very first bill that we paid this month. And $13,949.31. Um, I won't read all of the cyber um, bills. Um, maybe the highest one. Okay, PA Cyber um, is this month $84,130.72. The, uh, there were seven bills this month. I won't read the, the whole thing, but for the uh, sum total of $276,185.38, just for, we're talking cyber school here. We're not talking chiber, or, or charter, or water, uh, uh, where they have actually a building where uh, children attend. This is a cyber school. And for this month, we paid $276,185.38. Now, uh, for the charter schools, um, I won't read all of those either. Uh, it starts out with uh, page 180. Um, the total for the the charter schools is $491,301.44. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need, we need to do something about this to help our budget and to help our students so that um, we can provide uh, for them instead of uh, people that are uh, going either out to a, another school district away from ours or just w sitting at home, uh, you know, looking at a computer. So I did do the grand total. The grand total of that for this month is $767,486.82. That's a lot, of, a lot of money that could be going into our budget for our students here, just want to remind everybody that we have to get legislation. I realize it's not our fault. We get the bills. We have to pay the bills. Um, this is happening all over the state of Pennsylvania. So we need to get to our legislators. We need to get to our people, our parents who have children in school so that um, things could be made better for them. Um, so it's just a, just, a, just a reminder to, that we have to work a little harder to uh, get these people that represent us in Harrisburg to uh, check on their legislation, change it, make it better for all students. Um, I, do, I did have a question about uh, on page 206. Wow, 206. <laughs> no, did I write the right number down? Okay. Two oh six, uh, county transportation. Uh, my question is: since we have our own transportation, um, why do we have to pay out ten thousand dollars to the county-wide transportation? I know that there were some special uh, needs students that need to be transferred that that we can't accommodate. But ten thousand dollars seems like a lot, and I'm questioning it. Have so there would be some runs that we have contracted out with countywide. They tend to do van runs, um, not uh, regular buses. Uh, so these would be van runs, either t for uh, day programs or potentially to a sporting event. 
Um, but I believe we use another contractor for sporting events, Philly Transit. Oh, we didn't know that. Okay. So, uh, so there are small pieces of transportation that we do contract out. And we've been doing that uh, for at least the last 11 years. And it's just one company <laughs> countywide or? Um... There's a couple companies that we utilize, Philly Transit being the, the um, the majority of the runs that we uh, uh, contract out and countywide uh, used to do uh, a significant amount of busing. Now they mainly do van services, uh, which would mean a smaller vehicle taking a student to a, a school or a uh, event that we were not able to do. Okay, well, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Madam President. That's all I have. Anybody else? No, I just had a question about the one invoice there um, on that page that's for 4500 Is that from June or is that from September? <laughs> the indication is it's uh, for transportation for last year. So, uh, June 7th is the date on uh, that check. So that would have been for a um, for services provided last year. At that time, okay. Yeah. So maybe that's why it's over. Do I have a motion to approve the bills for payment in the amount of four million seven hundred and eighty-four thousand nine hundred dollars and ninety-nine cents? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Now we have questions on new business items. Are there any questions on education items one through seven? Madam President, I, yes. I don't have a question per se. I just want to thank Ms. Hudson and Mr. Wade and their teachers that are going to, item number seven, I'm sorry, um, that are going to hold Saturday Success Academy again this year. And um, I really appreciate them going over and above and beyond. Are there any questions on finance items one and two? Are there any questions on human resource items one through 16? Are there any questions on policy items one through six? Oh. <laughs> there are no property items. Are there any comments from the public regarding agenda items? No. Hearing none. Do I have a motion to approve education items one through seven? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve finance items one and two? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve human resource items one through 16? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve policy item one through six? Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. There are no property items. County Community Committee reports. Ms. Woodfolk, do you have a report for the Delaware County Community College? Um, Madam President, no, not at this time. Thank you.
Ms. Forbes, do you have a report for PSBA Legislative Council? No, I don't have a, a report at this time. Our meeting was canceled for this month. Okay, thank you. Ms. Monroe? Yes. Do you have a report for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit? Um, not a report, but just want to make uh, citizens and the board aware of some um, house bills that might be going into effect. Um, House Bill 1076 is the Senior Tax Reduction Incentive Volunteer Exchange Program. So this program um, will allow seniors to volunteer at their local school districts and receive a portion of the property tax credit. So I felt that some of our seasoned since I'm always saying that, you know, our, seats, our senior citizens can't afford to pay these property taxes, I figured I'd bring that to the forefront. So all the seniors that are listening out there, look out for House Bill 1076. <laughs> that would be all, Madam President. And hopefully I could be one of those senior citizens. Thank you, Ms. Monroe. Mrs. Irons. Yes, ma'am. Do I have a report? on the Parent Student Advisory Committee. Yes, I do. I have a brief report. Good evening, everyone. On October the 2nd, I had the pleasure of attending the professional development active shooter drill at Academy Park High School. Um, it was very um, informative, a little, I want to say scary. It's just sad that we have to have these drills, um, but we have to do them. So um, it was very informative. On the 4th was homecoming, and I must say we had a beautiful session outside with all of the tailgating from the past classes. Um, we all had a good time. On the 16th was the Parent Student Advisory Committee meeting. I would have liked to have a better turnout, but Mr. Newcomer did present the safe to say. Mr. Newcomer, I'm sorry, and Ms. McGlynn presented uh, the safe to say at and our next meeting will be Monday, December the 9th, 6 p.m., Harris Elementary School. Thank you, Ms. Ray. And um, the topic of discussion will be special education. So I hope um, that parents will come out and I will be uh, posting things and there will be a Global Connect call to remind parents. But once again, Monday, December 9th, 6 p.m. at Harris Elementary School, and it's open to every parent of the district. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mrs. Irons. Mr. Diorio, do you have a solicitor's report? Not, not this evening. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk to you <laughs> Dr. Butts, is there an administrative update? Yes, just a couple of items. We had a, an executive session uh, during the committee of, after the committee of the whole meeting, which was two weeks ago on the Thursday. Uh, I forget the date, but uh, two Thursdays ago was the uh, committee of the whole meeting. And after an executive session to talk, of, uh, discuss personnel, safety items, and negotiations. The, uh, prior to this meeting, there was also an executive session. Uh, at the executive session, uh, safety and personnel were discussed. Safety items relating to our buildings and uh, specifically Academy Park High School. The, uh, there are the two items I wanted to highlight. Madam President, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Butts. Are there any comments from citizens regarding non-agenda items? And we have a few here. When you come up to the podium, would you please um, state your name, your full address, and you have three minutes. Mrs. Latanya Manson.
my time start after my name and stuff, right? I should know this. Latanya Manson, 1545 Forrester Avenue, Sharon Hill, PA. Y'all ready? Oh, okay. All right, so um, as you know, the cheerleaders, um, we had 36 middle school cheerleaders this year for football season. So that was a plus. We're looking forward to bringing a lot of them over when they try out for the high school. This year we did, um, the cheerleaders sponsored the alumni homecoming tailgating. Um, how did I say? Okay, so what we did was we put it out there, and it was mainly me, and my cheerleaders backed me up. What we, I got approved from Mr. Robinson and um, the athletic director to see if where we could go. We got approved for the tennis courts. That was fine. No problem. Some things that I didn't take into account for ahead of time, because I was just like, let's just throw it together and see if it can rock out. The pictures that you're looking at are some of the pictures from the alumni tailgating. Um, I, we received so many positive um, acclimates for that night. Like, everybody was just excited. The, even the alumni, we had classes from 1983 all the way up to 2000 and, what was last year? 19. 2019, I had a whole bunch of alumni cheerleaders come back. They were all at the tennis courts. It was, it was phenomenal. It was very fun. Um, they enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. The cheerleaders enjoyed putting it on for them. Um, basically, like I said, what we did was we tried to get the tennis courts for them. We were going to try and go across the street, but the goal was for them to be at least look at the game as much as possible. However, it didn't all work out like they didn't even, some of them didn't even know we won. Majority of them knew, but <laughs> they, they were just so excited and happy to see each other. This was something that the alumni had always expressed over the years, and we just never got it together. It's always something, something, something always came up. So me, being as though I work at the school, I just was like, let me see if I can get it approved. If Mr. Robinson say yeah, and Vo say I can get on these tennis courts, we gonna rock out. So the only problem that, well, two things. Vo, the football coach, he loved it. He was like, it was so much excitement. He was like, I think the boys showed out and they must have, was playing for everybody, and he was like, he wished all the home games could be like that. I do too, but that ain't gonna work. However, he, um, Mr. Day, the tennis coach, he is a little upset about um, the tennis courts afterwards. Now, from my understanding, um, well, no, my husband, my son, as well as my sister and one of my friends, everybody cleaned up, but we all moved the trash over to the outside of the tennis court so that the trash could get picked up. I could, You can't see everything at night. It's 9 o'clock at night. So I went back the next morning. The trash was gone because we were going to move it to the trash bin. Oh, so I'll collect my pictures while I'm walking. Um, <laughs> so we collected them. The trash basically. Oh, okay, I'm seeing. Yeah. Basically, what we are you looking at the picture? Yeah, they're still going around. Oh, okay, so I'll do it while I walk to my seat. Okay. <laughs> so basically, the the tennis courts needed to be cleaned up, and we were trying. I couldn't get in the tennis courts to clean it up. It's supposed to be open afterwards. You're however, you're fine. Oh, okay. Well, the uh, we clean them up. Yeah, we clean them up. We will have to have a conversation about next year and plans uh, because there probably is ways that we can continue to do this in a better fashion so that we're prepared. There was a lot of people there, a very positive event. So the cleanup, well, we, we, we'll get through. And yes, uh, a couple of people had concerns, but uh, we'll be okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mason. Thank you, Mrs. Manson. All right, Ms. Anson. Uh -huh. I was right this time. Ms. Cherie Monroe, you have three minutes. Would you please go to the podium and state your name and address? Yes, ma'am, you have three minutes. Cherie Monroe, 1044 Orange, like the color, Avenue, Sherry Hill, PA, 19079. I have two concerns. Um, first, I would like to thank the principal at Sherry Hill. Thank you very much. Um, 
one of my concerns is your staff and how they interact with children. Um, this is just across the whole district. Okay. But I'm just particularly thanking Mr. Baxter. Um, I have a uh, concern that some of the staff members here at Southeast Delco don't know the difference between being a staff member and being a child. And when they engage with children, they become infants. My second concern is safety, um, particularly with um, the older children and the safety of your staff, as well as the safety of the children of the district. So I urge, as a parent in the district, finally, that uh, the school board members really take heed to the security of their district before something major happens in your district. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And again, I would indicate um, Mr. Robinson and Dr. Ryan are here. They do need to uh, follow up with you. Is uh, Mr. Robinson, you're aware of both situations yeah. and the connection between the situations, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So if you, tonight, could you give them a time and make a, a scheduled time that you can meet with them, Mr. Robinson? Thank you. Madam President, I just have a comment. Let me say this. Everybody, mo most people know me from being in the audience instead of up here. I was a parent at Academy Park and worked at Academy Park. My daughters, my babies, all my children went to Academy Park. Let me say this. I've been preaching on that podium about the safety in the high school since before I was on this board. The buck stops here. We have to do something. It's a shame that these children don't feel safe to come to school. And I'm going to continue with my big mouth every meeting until something is done. And that's all I have to say. Before we get off of this topic, may I say something? Um, my daughter, my oldest daughter, she graduated from Academy Park in 2013. Um, during her final year at Academy Park, we also experienced bullying. Um, she was in the medical careers program, and she had to stop going to the medical careers program because she was bullied on the bus going to medical careers program. Program. I spoke with the principal, and the principal wanted to have a meeting. My daughter begged me not to because she felt that that would make it even escalate. Mm -hmm. So we avoided her doing the things that she wanted that she felt very excited about doing. She stopped cheer, she was a cheerleader. She stopped cheerleading leading as well. And I applaud the parents who have taken action. And I am so sick of this still going on. It saddens me to know that my daughter went through it and that there's continually yes. being other girls going through this at our school. You know, we're talking about safety. Safety is a major issue here. And as an educator, I can't imagine to have a child, you know, wh how was she being educated? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. not fair to her. And neither one of them, and these are the o only two of them. So them. You know, what about the other ones that are afraid That's to right. report, right. like my daughter? I just want to go on the record saying I'm in support of the parents and um, Mrs. Irons and Mrs. Forbes. So, so I have a question because now we have a new safe, safe to say safe. Hold on, let me get that wording correct. Mr. Newcomer. Mr. Newcomer? Yes, Mr. Okay. Newcomer. So is, is this part of Mr. Newcomer's new uh, job description? Is this part of safe to say? Is the bullying part of safe to say? Um, will program be part of safe to say? So 
Yes. Um, and it's not exclusively. For right, I know it's not exclusively, but this is part of safety of the school. Safe to say, something is a program that uh, the state put into effect, and this is part of that program, the regulation. Okay, because at this point, um, I'm going to um, piggyback off Miss of Irons that um, it's great having all these meetings at this time. However, if we don't give Mr. Robertson, the principal of Sharon Hill, the resources, I'm sorry, Kami Park, the resources he needs in order to make a safe environment, um, then we are failing students on an everyday basis. There are, as Ms. Forza says, as an educator, we come to school, we get emails saying, hey, this kid is, you know, died, this kid has passed away. And the one common factor is bullying. The parents don't know, the kids don't know. Um, and it's just, it's just sad. And I work in Southwest Philly and I tell people all the time, I am so numb to gun violence that I teach through shootings. I don't tell my kids to hit the floor anymore. I'm just, so it is becoming norm. I don't want bullying to become a norm in Southeast Delco. I don't want bullying to become a norm in any school district. I don't want violence towards anyone to be a norm to the point where you're numb to it, to the point where I have to say to myself, hey, that was gunfire, everybody hit the floor. Not as soon as I hear it, hit the floor, everybody, it's me teaching, oh wait, yo, was that gunfire? No, we need to be more proactive. We can have 5,000 meetings, but if we're not putting a plan into action, then we are part of the problem at this point. I don't know what more can happen in this district to force our hand to do something about safety, not only in the high school, but in all buildings. And that means even students being disrespectful to teachers. Teachers need to feel safe. They need to feel like, <coughs> excuse me, they're in an environment. Because if I'm a teacher and I don't feel safe in my class, I'm not teaching nobody's kid. I'm there for a paycheck. And what it seems like it's coming down to a Southeast Delco that these teachers are here just for a paycheck. So again, I am implore the board to literally make a plan and we should present it at this point. So the reality is we need the support of the community. This is a community issue, a school issue, a board issue, an administration issue. We all have to work on it together. There are items that were shared here in terms of a two specific student situations that I cannot comment on because they are student situations. Board members are well aware of some of the uniquenesses with these, the two individuals that spoke. Having said that though, the safety items at Academy Park and throughout the district needs to be a priority. We need to focus on it. We need to get utilize the grant funding that we have in our staffing so that we all can come together but we need the support of everybody around the table here. We need the support of every parent in this district, every community member that showed up at Academy Park on nights filled to support us. This is not simply a school issue. It is a school issue and community issue that we have to work through. And we need everybody to take a proactive uh, response. Uh, speaking with their students, about uh, their role, about what they uh, should be doing, who they should be talking, administration following up, administration and every position from a um, bus driver uh, to our instructional aides, to our security, to our teachers, to our uh, building principals. Everybody is in this together. 
We have to do what is right for our students. Thank you, everyone, that um, made remarks tonight on this concern, bullying that has been going on in not only in our district, but in every school district, I'm sure throughout the United States. But we have to concentrate on Southeast Delcos and the bullying that's going on here. It's something that we can't tolerate. No child should have to come to school with the fear of they are going to have a fight or there's going to be a problem. Just like it was said, the teacher can't teach and the child cannot learn. And that's unacceptable. So we are going to meet, uh, and we're going to start now from ground one. This is something that we're starting now to see how much we can accomplish on this going forward so that we can all come to a happy medium. And this is something that our district hopefully will not have to continuously contend with. So if you just bear with us so that we can start this ball rolling, I would appreciate it. But we are, this board is starting to that ball rolling. Thank you. Announcements for future meetings. Committee of the Whole will be held on Thursday, November the 14th, 2019 at 6 p.m. Board business meeting will be held on Thursday, November the 21st, 2019 at 6 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Meeting is adjourned.